Вітаю вас на каналі UA TV. Про роль НАТО в боротьбі України та Європи проти агресії Росії говоритимемо із колишнім міністром оборони Австрії, нині президентом Австрійського інституту європейських і безпекових студій Вернером Фаслябендом. Hello, Mr. Fassler-Bend. Austria is uh, the partner of NATO for almost 20 years. What does this cooperation give your country? This was very important because this was a completely new situation after the fall of the Iron Curtain, the opening of Europe, you could say, and the whole transformation of the continent. It gave us the chance to sit at the same table with all the other European nations to discuss security, safety problems, challenges for the future, and also to learn by the exercises uh, and by common training uh, with NATO partners also to, to get the right standards uh, in the military field. For us, NATO Partnership for Peace has become the most important security organization and the most important uh, instrument for the standardization of our own army. Speaking about safety, the NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg was recently in Ukraine and he said Ukraine's safety means Europe's safety. What do you think, how dangerous can uh, for uh, Europe, for Ukraine, can Russia be? Uh, I agree absolutely that the case of and the importance of Ukraine goes far beyond uh, the country. It's not only European safety that is uh, challenged, but I think this case will decide over the world order. Because if it is possible that one country just is going to change the borders of any other neighboring countries. This would have consequences probably also in the Far East, in Africa, in other regions of the world. And uh, you can be sure that there are dozens of politicians and military people in other countries just waiting and looking and saying, okay, if Putin can do that, we can do that too. And insofar, to have here a clear line and a clear, very clear answer is important for the security and the safety of the whole world. Uh, what do you think as the ex-minister of defense, Austria, um, how dangerous is uh, Russia's uh, military? Uh, well, I have followed, of course, the development of uh, Russian military over the decades. Uh, you have to say, after uh, the end of the Soviet Union, uh, there was a period of 10 to 15 years where they had very little investment into the military uh, forces, and they were not in a very good status. Uh, if you look at the invasion of South Ossetia and Abkhazia in Georgia in 2008, you can even say this was almost a lousy performance the Russian troops had. Uh, but you have to say and admit, uh, they took it as an example that they had to improve it, and now they are investing a lot. And this also should be, of course, uh, the moment where we are re overthinking and rethinking our concepts uh, and also our investments in security and into the military field. Mm -hmm. And can Russia's army be more strong than NATO's? Certainly not. Uh, you could not compare it. Uh, NATO together is by far stronger uh, than Russia. It should not be overestimated. You can say that Russia has built up in the last five years or seven years, uh, well, some special forces that are pretty good, but uh, the overall condition of the army uh, still is partly pretty weak. And from time to time we hear that Russia increases its, its military power. Maybe it's for public eye. Maybe it's not true? Uh, I would think, you know, partly they are doing it. They are investing now more into the air and also uh, into their sea forces. But uh, the general purpose army, which means the biggest part of the army, is uh, round about in a similar condition as it used to be 10 or 50 years, uh, 15 years ago after a period of 10 or 15 years of no investment and very low performance. Uh, what's your opinion about Ukrainian army? How strong it is? Yeah, uh, Ukrainian army had uh, 
originally the same background as the Russian army and also the same quality. Then, of course, there followed a period of very low investment, uh, which meant that uh, the quality of the army could not be developed as it should have been. Uh, this obviously also was one of the reasons uh, that Russia and uh, Russian-linked groups uh, tried to have sort of an invasion in, in uh, Donetsk and Luhansk, and of course also in the uh, case of Crimea. Crimea. Of Crimea. Uh, but uh, I also have the impression that the Ukrainian army has improved quite a bit uh, since, that now they are performing already quite well, and that they are getting better from day to day. What can you advise? In which way should the Ukrainian army just increase its power? Well, uh, I think it is almost in every respect. <laughs> you just have to improve uh, generally. Of course, uh, the ground forces uh, in those particular phases are the most important, uh, are the most important challenges. And uh, I think you are on, on a good way. What you need is special forces, but also the overall development uh, of the general army. And due to the fact that you still have a conscript system, it probably is good to develop a second branch of uh, a professional army uh, next to the conscript army in order to have, on the one hand, uh, enough a uh, number, a big number of soldiers and that you can respond as a nation. And on the other hand, also that you have enough forces for special purposes and uh, for difficult military tasks. And insofar, uh, a certain split will be necessary. What are you saying? Can Ukraine do uh, itself or it needs help? Because uh, you know that recently Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko, uh, he signed into the law the revised Ukrainian military doctrine and uh, it declares Russia military opponent, it supports NATO membership. Um, what can NATO give uh, Ukraine and give Europe in this case? Um, you have to be aware that, you know, in the case of, uh, of aggression, you mostly will be just by yourself. Uh, nobody will be there in order to help you, uh, at least as long as you are not a member of an alliance. And insofar, of course, you have to develop enough forces to withstand Russian troops. And I think you have all the conditions because uh, uh, Russia cannot take its, its uh, whole army in order to invade, uh, to invade Ukraine so far. Uh, the capabilities to defend the country uh, can be there and will be there if uh, Ukraine is further more developing its army uh, and its military forces. Uh, what do you think? Uh, can Ukraine uh, give back Crimea and uh, can it stand uh, just against Russia in the uh, east of Euro in the east of Ukraine? Uh, I think you know the most important challenge for the moment is just uh, not to lose anything else. This is the most important question. And uh, certainly to regain uh, Donetsk and Luhansk will not be easy as long as uh, the rebels are, uh, are backed completely by Russian forces and by Russian material. Uh, insofar, uh, I think that there will be no military solution of this crisis. We have to have a political solution of this crisis. Strong military in order to defend and a clear diplomatic and political initiative in order to solve the problem. Thank you, Mr. Fassler-Band, for your thoughts and thanks for Austria's opinion.